So this episode is actually all about how to get therapy for your OCD or what kind of therapy is effective for OCD. So there's one very simple short answer to that, which is the therapy that you need is cognitive behavioural therapy for OCD. Now, I see or speak to a lot of people who say, oh, I've had CBT and it didn't work. And I only have to talk to them for a little while to discover that what happened was they had CBT, but they didn't have CBT for OCD. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about what's different from standard CBT and CBT for OCD. Because if you find yourself a therapist who does CBT, what you want to be really clear about is that they know specifically how to do CBT for OCD. One of the biggest things probably is that in standard CBT, we spend quite a lot of time uh, talking about the thoughts that people have and getting them to see, you know, how realistic are they? Or, you know, is that, you know, a very black and white way to think? Or could you think about, you know, could you think about that differently? Kind of getting engaged with them, rationalising them, analysing them a bit. We don't do that for OCD, okay? Because what we know is the more you engage with that stuff, the worse it gets, right? So if you go and see a therapist who is giving you CBT, but is getting you to grab hold of your thoughts and try and think about those thoughts differently to, you know, kind of tell yourself, oh, you know, but how realistic is it that you're really going to burn down the house? That sort of thing. Then you know that that is not the right therapy for OCD. The other thing that's usually a dead giveaway is Does your therapist, when you first go and see them or when you talk to them, do they mention ERP, exposure and response prevention? Okay, because as much as people would love to uh, not ever have to expose themselves to their fears, this kind of treatment has been proven to be effective. And, you know, for about 50 years, we've been using it. And yes, we do have other newer things that we also like to um, add in, the more cognitive side of things. But all the research shows that it is the cognitive and the behavioural stuff together that make the best results. So if you're seeing someone who doesn't mention ERP, they're probably not the right therapist for you. And if you see someone who says you can't do ERP for your kind of OCD, also probably they just don't quite have the experience to understand how to do ERP for your particular presentation because you can do ERP with anything, okay? So you want a CBT therapist who is experienced um, and in the know about how to treat OCD properly. One of the ways you'll know that is that they do not engage with your thoughts to any great length and they talk about ERP early on and they get you clear that one of the things you're going to have to do is face your fears. Okay, so those are the things that you're going to be looking for to start with. Now, I know that it's quite confusing. There's so many different kinds of therapy. And so maybe you prefer to see someone where you could just talk and talk and talk and not have to face your fears. And that is totally fine. You can do that. It's just that unfortunately, there is no evidence to suggest that that is going to be any good for your OCD. In fact, again, unfortunately, that's highly likely to get you to engage more in your thoughts and think about them more and therefore make the problem more entrenched. I actually worked with someone who'd had about six years of psychodynamic therapy. He had uh, obsessions about whether or not he might be gay, even though he'd always thought of himself as straight. And with, for six years, he talked about why this was, what this meant about him, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then, oh, he wanted to understand why. That was his big thing. And then I suggested that maybe for sort of six weeks... He try it a different way, and he just see the thoughts as you know un, unimportant and start to treat them differently. And sure enough, he felt completely different. 
within about six to eight weeks. So I'm not saying, wow, aren't I amazing, blah, blah, blah. Not at all. The point is the right therapy for the condition works really well. And I'm not saying that other therapies aren't good at other things. I'm sure they are. And I'm not, I'm not a specialist in those things. So I can't talk about that. But what we do know is that there are no other therapeutic protocols that are as robust, as well researched or as effective as specialised CBT treatment for OCD. So that is what you want to be looking for. Uh, other things that you want to watch out for are you shouldn't be spending lots of time delving into your past history. I'm not saying that you shouldn't have share some of it and talk about stuff that's relevant. Like sometimes it can be really relevant to your OCD, like when it started or... But what, what we don't do is start at year dot and then talk through everything that you can ever remember. What we look at is, OK, here's what the problem is. You know, how does the past um, impact on that? Or how, you know, are your beliefs from the past part of a maintaining factor for this? You know, so we will. It's not that we never look at the past because it can be relevant. Right. But we wouldn't spend a lot of time going over and over that. Or certainly we wouldn't say we've got to know everything about you before we can start treating your OCD. You can start treating your OCD as soon as we know that you understand what's going on, then you can get started. So that's the other thing probably that's really important to remember that it's probably way more comfortable for you to talk about other things than it is for you to address your fears. And when you're looking for a therapist, okay, just remember that even if someone is a CBT therapist or a psychologist who can deliver CBT, you want to make sure that you ask them about their experience in treating OCD and maybe ask them for like a brief uh, explanation of, of what, how they do that. And as I said earlier, you know, they want to be mentioning ERP and sort of and the idea of facing your fears because some people are trained in CBT but they are not trained specifically in or experienced in treating OCD and like I explained earlier that's really it's a really important distinction uh anything else to add about looking for a therapist oh yes um so do you have to like your therapist? Well, it's kind of helpful, isn't it? <laughs> if you like them, if you feel that you can talk to them, if you feel that they understand you, you know, and somebody who understands OCD, probably you should feel they understand you pretty quick because what you're going to be talking about is your OCD. You know, you don't have to think they're the greatest person on earth, but you do have to feel confident that they know what they're doing. But I suppose one thing to be aware of is that often with OCD, you may struggle to feel certain about something or want something to feel right. And of course, you can't know for sure that you've picked the right therapist. So you might just have to take a risk that this person is good enough, uh, especially if you find yourself starting therapy with one person and then another and then another. You might want to go, mm, is my OCD getting involved in this decision making process? So that's just another thing to watch out for. And I guess the other thing about, you know, do you have to like your therapist is what you do want to remember is your therapist is there to try and get your you to have a new and different relationship with your OCD, right? With uh, learning to, to deal with those thoughts differently and those behaviours differently. And a lot of the time that's not going to be comfortable for you. So... Sometimes when I'm working with people, I can see a look in their eyes when I suggest something and I'm like, you, you slightly hate me now at this moment, don't you? And I think, well, that's OK, you know, because actually part of my job is to help and encourage someone to do something that's really difficult and that they probably don't really want to do on many levels. Um, so, yeah, you don't always have to like them. I mean, it's useful if you want to turn up for therapy. Right. But um, you do need to remember that whilst it's a collaborative process and whilst we want you to be the one choosing to do uh, the next step on your hierarchy if you do your ERP, 
Absolutely, and we can't make you do anything, right? It's impossible. But it is also our job to strongly encourage you uh, to do things you don't want to do. So that can be a bit tough sometimes. So hopefully that's given you a little bit of a flavour of what you should be looking for in therapy. And I guess the other thing is, if you've watched uh, a bunch of my videos, if the approach that you're getting is vastly different, then you might want to just look into it a little bit more because I'm not making any of this stuff up. This is all, um, you know, empirically based uh, therapy that is the best thing for OCD. So this is not like my method. This is the best method. So yeah, just be wary of um, if it sounds super different to some of the stuff that I'm saying. It, it you know, obviously everyone has their own way of presenting things, but the general gist should should sort of think, oh yeah, I kind of heard that woman on YouTube talking about that stuff. You know, then you'll kind of know that you're in the right ballpark as well. So I hope that's been a bit helpful. And do ask if you have any questions. Uh, put them in the comment section and I will try really hard to answer. I know I'm not always that good at it, but um, I do try and fit it in. Okay. All right.